This is a Honda CRF 250L. It's a dual sport motorbike, which means it's kind of designed for road journeys and off-road journeys, which means it's a jack of all trades, master of none. It's the kind of bike where basically wherever you're in the world you go, if you're looking at rental motorbikes, you're likely to see this on the rental company's roster. So for example, if I'm looking to do a trip in Peru, a country I've never been to, the CRF 250L is a pretty good choice for someone like me because I'm gonna plot a route. I don't know if that route's gonna be road or off-road. There's no way for me to tell. So I'll go over 250L. So overall, this is a great motorbike, but uh, in Vietnam, we've documented this country pretty well. You guys should know if you're likely to be doing a road journey or an off-road journey. So if you are doing a road journey, you probably should go with a road motorbike. For example, the Honda CB500X. This motorbike is designed for the road. You could put on the boxes, more space, more comfortable, more control on the road, all of that kind of stuff. It's a road motorbike. This is a dual spot. It's a motorbike that doesn't know what it wants to be. So if you're doing a road journey, do a road motorbike. Also, what people don't understand is the XR150 is actually a similar size to this bike, but has a more comfortable seat, better position for a pillion, more rack space. It's far better, really, for a road journey. So who is the CRF 250L actually for? Someone like me who really doesn't know what the terrain is that they plotted. If I go to a country, I'll try and plot an off-road route because that's what I love, but I might end up on a road route. Maybe what I plotted isn't actually off-road. That's the CRF250 client. So we run this bike at Ticket with two setups, one for the road journeys with the dual sport tires, if you're booking Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi, for example. The other setup we run is the off-road setup with off-road uh, tires and things like that. So customers uh, will, be give it, will be chased on email, are you doing a road journey or an off-road journey? And we'll set the bike up to suit whatever the customer is trying to do. What I also want to talk about is this in our fleet is the least reliable motorbike that we have. I know around the world it has a reputation for being bulletproof and that's kind of true. But if you're in Vietnam where it's really hot and you're doing a road journey, you're pushing it to its limits on the road. If you're doing off-road, you're pushing it to its limits off-road. So the bike is actually not that reliable. I would say one out of every 10 rentals, something goes wrong on one of these bikes. Take the CB500 or the XR and they are really bulletproof. Uh, and also, uh, both bikes in fact, are easier to fix than the CRF250L. So we're getting the wrong kind of client uh, booking these bikes. So something else to consider with these bikes is you cannot find parts anywhere in the country, nothing. So the XR150 uh, shares a lot of parts with the uh, small semi-automatics. This bike, literally nothing. So if the bike does fail, um, you do have a bit of a problem on your hands between the customer and us. We have a problem on our hands. And uh, when it comes to tours, well, guides will carry spare clutch sets and things like that. But if you're just a rental client, perhaps you don't want to be carrying all of this extra stuff. Our clutch burning is 100% the client's fault. It's through bad driving, but it's pretty quick and easy to burn on a CRF 250. Again, it's not an off-road bike. It's not actually designed for rubbish riding through off-road terrain. You got a good rider on it, it's fine. You got a bad rider on it and the whole thing will just fall apart because um, it's not designed for it. So keep that in mind as well. I do love this bike though. It's great for tours. If the tour guide is there to help you. <laughs> There's some tips. If you think you are the rider for this bike, then you need to be pretty good with motorbikes in my eyes. You don't rent this bike as an amateur uh, rider, you should be doing XR or CB. But if you do think this is a bike for you, I'm gonna run you through some tips uh, that will help you get more reliability out of it. One more thing though, also on this bike, you don't even have a kick, which is really frustrating. Even a minor electrical issue, my, my starter button's not working, suddenly becomes a whole thing on one of these bikes. XR has a kick. Uh, CBs just don't break. Um, so yeah, it's annoying. So let me go through it. Heat is everything on off-road bikes and enduro bikes. This is kind of an off-road bike. So you must make sure your fan is working. The fan on this bike is located on the uh, left side of the radiator. Whether you're doing a road journey or an off-road journey, you will get the fan to come on uh, if you're pushing the bike a bit. And so if you find yourself and you never have a fan on, you know it's broken. Now the problem is with a broken fan is once a fan fails, the bike starts to get hot. Now the sensor, the, the temperature sensor fails, and then the cylinder head gasket fails, and then you get a coolant leak, and the whole thing just spirals drastically out of control, all from 
a simple fan failure. So what causes a fan to fail? The most common is electrics, so some wire is broken for some reason. Another is the customers drop the bike on the left side. This bends the plastic, it jams up the fan, fan stops working, then the sensor fails. Maybe you go to a mechanic and you fix the fan, but now the sensor's already failed, so you still don't have a fan. So, jamming of the fan through dropping the bike, uh, electrical issues, uh, or the sensor can just fail. It fails on, on bikes, and it's surprising to me how often they fail. I haven't found a solution to it. So make sure your fan is working. The next thing. You need to have oil and coolant in the bike. People are very familiar with how important oil is, but they're not familiar with how important coolant is. If you have a coolant leak, which is again common, uh, if this happens, then you won't have liquid in the radiator. If you don't have liquid in the radiator, the radiator doesn't actually get hot. So then the sensor doesn't work. So it's so important. On my own personal KTM, I check the radiator, the coolant twice a day in the morning and at lunchtime. That's how panicky I am about the coolant. On this bike, you should be checking it every day. Now, let me show you how to do that. If you come around here, uh, on the right side, you have your coolant cap. One on this bike, so easy. You open it up, you have the bike level, and you check that it's full up. If you do not have coolant in it, go to the mechanic, fill it up. Also at that point, you should be letting us know. Now, if you're in the jungle, it's unlikely, but let's say you are, you can fill this thing up with water. And I did a really deep jungle run on my KTM, which was just pouring out coolant. And I stopped at every stream every 20 minutes, filled up water, poured it in. I saved the bike. So water does work in these, in those real disaster uh, scenarios. Now, your next check, daily check, is your oil level. At Ticket, we tell you do not change the oil because we put in good oil, you don't need to change it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be checking it. You've got to check the oil. If the oil is burning out the exhaust or you've got an oil leak or somewhere, you do need to know about it. So here's how you do it. I have a full video on this topic, but a quick rundown. The oil glass window is always on the brake side. You've got to have the bike completely flat and your window down here should be half to three quarters full. Keep in mind, if you rock the bike left and right, you massively manipulate the results. So it does need to be level, okay? That's a daily pre-flight check. Air pressure, oil, coolant. If you get those, for any, those right, then you're unlikely to have a disaster on this bike. The rest is just random electrical issues. Uh, starters not working or something like that. Also, let's talk about off-roading just to wrap this video up. This bike is pretty good at off-roading, but you will find if you're trying to get better off-roading, you're actually going to have more fun and get mm, develop your skill set more on a CRF150 or XR150 because the power to weight ratio is better on those bikes. You can flick them around, do wheelies, much easier than on a CRF250. And actually, once you've mastered the 150, that's when you're ready to move on to the KTM 350, etc. I personally would skip this bike out entirely. This bike is for the guy who's going to a new country and has no idea what they're gonna land. Maybe they can't afford a KTM or they don't know uh, they're gonna be really, really off-road. That's this bike here but it's not a dedicated off-road bike. CRF 150 or go all in and rent the, the enduro bikes. Um, apart from that, it's a really, really great bike. I just feel the wrong kind of client is renting it, which is why I wanted to make this video. Jack of all trades, 